Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Marr. This is part two to our series on self-portraits. And I have to tell you, I'm racking my brains a little bit as an art teacher on this one. Um, today's topic is relative proportion. Uh, normally, we do three, there's three different options for what we do in school for this assignment. Um, you sight draw, and I teach you how to hold up a pencil. You see artists do that and um, they're getting the proportions right. That's what today is all about. Um, ideally, I want to get everybody to that point. Um, on the hybrid system that we're on right now, we're going to try some different options. It, it really depends on the level and the confidence of the students. The focus of this is about value and texture. So we're going to, we're going to get through with the relative proportion part as quickly as possible for your self-portrait. However, I don't want to overlook the topic. So relative proportion is very, very important, no matter how you get there. Um, it's about making sure that every proportion of a part is in relation to the whole. So for instance, the eyes are the right size for the size of the head or the nose and the eyes and the mouth are all in relative proportion to each other and the shape of the head. Now, this could be true for anything. You know, it could be true the size of the door compared to the size of the wall if you're doing um, an architectural picture. But in our case, we're talking about self-portraits, and this is part two of the self-portrait series. So, sight drawing would be ideal if you have a model in front of you and you use your pencil to measure the height of the head to this, you know, different parts of the body maybe, or um, any aspect to the to another aspect of your picture. Um, what a lot of people normally do in this assignment is scaling, and I teach you how to grid a small grid on your photograph, and then a larger grid, and we plot the points and get it that way. Um, in this case, for speed, if you want to, your third option, is to put it on an overhead projector, put it against the wall and trace it. Because I really don't want you struggling at home with relative proportion on an assignment that's really about value. So those know that there are different ways to create that relative proportion and we're breezing through it quickly, okay? Having said that, I wanna show you some rules of thumb that are very, very general, okay? and get you to the point that I want you to be your next goal for this assignment, which is to have outlines, which we've already talked about, and contour lines um, on your paper so that we can get ready for the relative proportion. Okay, so I'm going to switch to the other screen for just a second. And then we're going to just take a look at what we're going over today. Relative proportion. No matter how you get there, outlines and contour lines, pencil choices. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. These three things, we're, we're going to work very lightly. But first, I want to go over relative proportion with you. So I'm going to readjust the camera. And I thought I could do that while you were on the other screen, but it didn't happen. So um, let's do this. General rules of thumb. If you're, first of all, when you're little, people teach you how to make, say, an eye, okay? And they say, oh, the eye is about the shape of a football. Well, that's a symbol of an eye. Everybody's eye is a slightly different shape, and you really need to observe specifically, particularly if you're doing a self-portrait. Um, the other thing to think about is even a single person the eye changes if you're laughing or if you're crying or if you're sleeping. The, the shape of the eye is going to change when the shape of the cheek pushes against it or, you know, all sorts of different things. So what I'm going over today is just a quick general idea of what relative proportion is in order for you to, in order for you not to feel guilty that we're skipping over it on this project, basically. So let's say the shape of the head is an egg shape. All right, and I'm going to do this really quickly, so I'm not going to worry too, too much about the details. All right, there are certain rules of thumb that we're going to pay attention to. So say, for instance, if we divide this in half, let's 
generally say that's going to be half. I'm going to draw a line across the entire paper. That's where your eyes would go. Okay. Half of that. That's where the bottom of your nose would go. Half of that would be where the mouth would go. Now, again, I cannot stress enough. Everybody's different. Every expression is different. Okay, and let's say this is the bottom. And this is the top. Now, I can't tell you how many people come in at the beginning of foundations and the eyeballs are somewhere up here. Because they're thinking, oh, well, it's the top feature on the face, so it must go at the top. Um, that's not necessarily, yeah, that's not true. Because you've got all your forehead and you've also, you're seeing a little bit of the top of the skull. So let's say your eyes fall here, okay? For our purposes, maybe we'll do sort of an egg shape. Another general rule of thumb is that you're going to have about an eyeball's width in between and on either side. Now, I didn't draw this egg exactly. None of this is going to be exact. But I just want you to get those ideas down. The nose, the tip of the nose, would fall about halfway. So you've got halfway. Half of the half is about a quarter. Well, it is a quarter. Um, so the tip of your nose would fall somewhere down in here, and your nostrils would fall in around it. Okay? Half of that would be an eighth. Your mouth would fall there. Okay? And then your chin would fall underneath. Those are just general rules of thumb to get started. Your ears tend to fall between the eye line and the nose line. Okay. Another rule. Oh, first of all, we didn't talk about the center line. But you'll have a center line down the center of your face this way. Okay. Other rules of thumb to think about is the inside corner of your eye usually relates to the edge of the nostrils. And within the eyes, and we'll we'll do a whole thing on eyes, nose, mouth when we do shading. Say your pupils are here and they should be dead center. I kind of got off off track there. If you go down from the pupil, and now again, it, it makes a difference um, what shape your mouth is in, but a relaxed sort of mouth might fall all the way out to under the pupil. The lower lip doesn't tend to be as long as the upper lip. Okay, and it tends to be puffier. Okay, those are general rules of thumb to think about. Now, this is a profile. I, I'm sorry, this is a frontal view. All right, that's if you're looking directly at the front of a person. If we have a three-quarter view, it means the head is turned slightly. Now, you're working from a photograph. So um, it is what it is, and you're going to draw it in a way that this isn't going to matter, but I want you to understand it just because I would be remiss not to discuss it. If this is the case, now your center line is rolling around here. You're not completely at the side. You're not completely at the front, but it would be rolling around here. Your eyes would fall in this area. Now, this eye is going to be foreshortened. We haven't really gone over that term, but it's turned away from you so that parts of it are closer, parts of it are further away, parts of it are hidden, maybe hidden by the nose, which could be coming in this way. All right, maybe we didn't do any eyebrows over here, but let's say you've got an eyebrow. Um, the eyebrow might come up this way. 
and might actually sculpt in and you get the cheek the profile of the cheek there and then the far side of your eye might be a little shorter the other side might go behind the nose and it might be turned say it's over there like that and then this side you would see more like this So it's turned, but not completely sideways. Same thing. That side of the mouth would be shorter. This side of the mouth might be longer. Okay. And your ear would fall back here. Probably further back there. Um, your neck is not going to come all the way over here. Okay. Like your neck here. Will come that way. Here, it might fall somewhere there. Okay. But all of those horizontal, all of those horizontal lines, this would actually probably be up a little bit more. Let's, let's say the eye is more up here. I, I lost sight of what I was doing and didn't put it on that line. Okay. If you're drawing from the side, again, you're going to chisel into this egg shape. You'd see way more of the skull back here. Your nose, you, first of all, you'd probably have chisel in here with the nose and the eye socket. This might fall like that. Your eye, now the pupil might be facing this way. And your eye might even be more like that. And you wouldn't see the other eye at all. You'd only see one side of the lips. And then your, your chin might come out more like that. The neck is coming off the back here and here. And then you kind of get three. You could almost divide this in third. The front part with the facial features. I'm probably going to make the skull a little bigger on this one. Or right, well, let's say one third here, one third here, one third here. Your ear would fall in this way. Your jaw would fall in that way. And this would relate to the skull back here. Okay. So if you had hair, you know your jaw is going to end here. And this would all be, you know, whatever, whatever haircut there is. Okay. You might have, if you had bangs. Okay, probably shouldn't have done that. It covers up all the lines, but um, those are proportions that you want to know. Regardless of what we're doing in class, you should know that those things exist. Okay, now for what we're going to do, whether you sight draw, you scale, or you um, blow it up on the projector, you're only there two days a week. You're only there less than an hour, not including getting everything out and cleaning it up. So we're breezing through relative proportion and moving on. So what you need to end up with at the end of the week, no matter how you do it, and you recognize this baby from the first one, first video, you want to get to the point where you've got all the lines lightly down on the paper. Okay? Very, very lightly. The reason for that is there's a couple things I want you to be aware of. First of all, if you erase a line and then you go over it with charcoal, it could leave a mark. So if you erase a line in the cheek, I'm not going to do it on this one. Um, let me see if I have another piece of paper. Maybe I can quickly do this. All right. So say I'm erasing a line on my page. And I go right along that line and I erase it. And then later I'm doing charcoal. Say this is like a shadowy part of the cheek. You can't really see it when it's like this. But if you rub it, see that mark you're going to get? You're not going to want that in the middle of your cheek. So basically it's emphasizing something you tried to erase in the first place. So we're going to avoid erasing. And there are kneaded erasers. I gave everyone a kneaded eraser. And there are these sort of vinyl erasers. Um, Either way, you want to avoid erasing. 
The other thing you want to avoid is carving into the paper. Now, we talked about the difference between a 4H and a 2B and an ebony pencil. But if you carve into the paper with a 4H pencil, which is a very hard lead that makes a light line, you want it to make a light line. But if you push too hard, whether you erase it or not, um, sometimes you get this line that just won't go away. Ah, it's kind of going away in this one. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it carves into the surface of the paper and the charcoal doesn't fit right, doesn't, doesn't sit right on that part. So you want to work very, very lightly, no matter how you get those contour lines and pencil lines down on the page. And it's okay to put lines where you'd see a shadow, okay? You're not just doing the features. So, for instance, if I have a deep shadow under the chin, I might put a very light, that's probably what that was. That's just marking a shadow. Okay, that's not an arm or anything like that. It's just where a shadow would go. Around the eyes, if there's a, an area there. But you want to do it light enough that you don't have to erase. The charcoal will just cover it. And you don't want to carve it into the paper um, because the charcoal will leave a funny mark there. Okay? So the goal, whether you sight draw, use the overhead projectors, or scale, is to get to this point. Next video, we're going to start talking about what we're, the real point of this, which is values, shading, light sources, creating forms, creating texture. All righty. So everybody have a great week. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Have a good day.